what is cooking, what is popping. It is your boy, Pad Chennington, and I am finally, finally getting around to doing a full vinyl collection tour, music room tour video, whatever you want to call it. If you've been following the channel for a while, it feels like every year I say I'm going to do a vinyl collection video. Trust me, I know January comes around every year and I'm like, I gotta do one of these videos. I've promised it forever and I just never get around to it. It's a super daunting task, but this year it's like the perfect opportunity for me to do it and we're going for it. So yeah, it's a video I've wanted to do forever. Something where I just take a look at everything I got, pick out some of my personal favorites or ones that just have a special story on how I got them or why I have them, etc. And every year, I just never end up making the video. So we're, we're going for it. At its current state, I've cut down on the collection pretty heavily from what you may remember from videos in the past. My music collection has changed so much over the years. Like if, if you were here in the beginning of the channel, you might remember the green and yellow uh, shelving units like those are long gone and then then i changed to like i think i got like a black one i don't even remember i'm gonna have like videos pop up on the screen now but it just changed a whole bunch even as of last year like the room was completely different i had so much stuff yeah i i would pick up just tons of records from yard sales in bulk for pretty cheap a couple months ago i decided to sell off a huge chunk of my collection most of this just stuff that i got at these yard sales and yeah here's what that room looked like last year and it's completely different now i, I repainted the walls and everything i needed a nice refresh and just decided to go for a more minimal feel even though there's still a, a shit ton of stuff here <laughs> like anyways though i i do want to jump right into the video and I'm going to kind of freestyle this thing along the way. I randomly just shot footage and kind of pulled out records in the moment that I felt really meant something to me or meant something to this channel. I don't know, or just stands out. Over the years, I've been sent so many things from so many amazing people and documenting everything I have here would make this video crazy long. So I think I'm just going to pick out a bunch of records that give my record collection justice as a whole, like the rare stuff or the weird and wacky stuff that I have. I have a lot of that stuff. So, but I do want to say thank you to anyone who's ever taken the time and effort to send me your work on vinyl, cassette, CD, whatever it may be. I have so much stuff from so many people. And even though I might not necessarily showcase it here, I can promise you I play your shit all the time. I've never been someone who cares that much about the condition of my records, as weird as that may sound to some people. At the end of the day, I love playing these. I don't care how rare or expensive something I have is. I'll just never keep it on a shelf, just like permanently untouched because it's worth something or whatever. Like I will play everything that I own here. So um, yeah, I, I, I never really cared about like the monetary value of it, but I do think it's interesting to, and I've never done this until now for making this video like try and calculate what my collection is worth as a whole i don't ever plan on selling this like or like i said looking at my music collection as a monetary figure but i do think it would be cool to see what this entire corner of just stuff in my office is worth in a way i have some really rare pressings in here we're gonna take a look at my insane test pressing collection as well and it's just crazy to think back when i first bought many of these records at retail what they're currently selling for right now like the vinyl market the, uh, the vinyl world is just insane it, it's kind of died down recently but oh my gosh like covid and like post covid it, shit got wild <laughs> you know like I, I don't know so it, it's just crazy to look back and um i also used to be really into retro video game collecting some of you may know in like the mid 2010s but a couple years ago, I decided to sell like 95% of what I had. And I just kept some of my personal favorites, which are in my like little area over here for records. So we'll take a look at some of those too. Some of my personal favorite video games that I own and I just, you know, always want to keep and hey, I keep them all together. So with, with all that being said, thank you for stopping by today. And before we begin, let me know in the comment section below what your personal favorite record, cassette, or CD is in your collection. I would love to conjure up a fun discussion in the comments, and I'll definitely be joining y'all down there. So yeah, throw a like on the video if you can. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. You know the deal. It helps out a whole bunch. And um, just one last time, we're going to kind of just freestyle this thing. We're just going to talk as we go and look at some stuff, and we'll see how the video turns out. So yeah, cheers. Um, cheers to great music and the shared creative energy of physical media that I hope never actually truly dies one day. I guess that's the best way to put it. Uh, there's something so special about vinyl records and like holding someone's 
creation and physical form and it's just that's why we love collecting you know so yeah let's get started with the video thanks for coming so I started collecting vinyl, I want to say around 2016. It had to be right after I stopped collecting retro games. I found that many of the games I would collect just stayed on a shelf and I never really played them. Like I collected a whole bunch of N64 stuff back in the day and all we did was play fucking like Smash and Goldeneye. Like it, all the stuff I had there, which is, it made no sense to really have it. it. And it all took up so much space, like the box games and I had like box systems and stuff. And I found that collecting vinyl was really practical in regards to space, at least in the beginning of collecting vinyl. Like now I got a whole damn, you, you know, shelving unit over here. But the fact that they fit just really neat side by side and didn't take up too much surface area. When, when I first began collecting records, I was still living at home with my parents right after college. So I had no room at all, and, and, and records was a, kind of a cool thing to collect. The first record I actually ever got that wasn't like a hand-me-down, I remember when I was like in middle school, I was obsessed with the Beatles, and my grandma gave me a uh, her like original A Hard Day's Night pressing, which I have somewhere, like I know I have it, I have to find it, because I will like hate myself if I can't find it. Um, but the first record I, I actually ever got that wasn't a hand-me-down like that was Kanye West's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. And I just remember loving the packaging of it. And as an aspiring graphic design major back when I was in college, I just loved everything you could do to emphasize the feeling of a music project through the packaging of a vinyl record. It was really inspirational to me at the time. Like it really helped me try and stay creative when I was working on projects at school. And, you know, for example, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, led me to discover the works of George Kondo, who did the illustrations you find on the artwork for that album, as well as the inserts on the inside. Um, what was really cool about this record specifically was it came with a bunch of little inserts and you could interchange what was being shown on the front cover of the vinyl jacket. And I just like, I love that at the time. It came with a, a gigantic poster with the pressing. And I think this was like 2013 uh, when I got this. And I never played it because I didn't have a record player at the time, but I loved just opening it up and going through it and just looking at it. It was all I needed. Fast forward a couple years, I get into collecting records at garage sales. I discover Vaporwave, the wonderful world of Vaporwave. I make the Patch Hennington channel. And before you know it, I just have a fuck ton of records sitting everywhere. The collection grew really quick. When I first made the channel, Vaporwave Vinyl, the, the Vaporwave Vinyl scene was still so new and you weren't getting pressings all the time like you do now. It feels like everything has been pressed these days, but back then, like there would be an announcement of a new Vaporwave Vinyl release once in a while. And when it did drop, you just like immediately went to copy. Even if you never heard of it, it didn't matter if it was Future Funk or Dream Punk or Mall Salt, what, whatever it was. If it was like something Vaporwave related, you're like, I gotta get this. <laughs> Some examples, of this for me at least was like the Vapor Manipool pressing from Dream Catalog, Cat Corpse Limited Edition 300 copy mint green Hereth pressing from Vinyl Digital, and the original, I'm talking the OG I'll Try Living Like This pressing from Quiet Earth Records. There were still a couple other ones I'm sure that in my collection somewhere. I could remember like some Future Funk ones at the time too. There was like Sailor Wave and A Million Miles Away. Those pressings, the OG standard black pressings from Neon City Records. I'm talking about the OG stuff, like the Sarah Burrito misspelling pressing, for those who know about that one, on A Million Miles Away. I got that classic stuff, but I don't mess around. I, like, I can't help, like, I'm recording this audio right now for this video. I can't help but smile thinking back at these times. It feels so long ago, but there was this real magic like magical energy seeing these projects come to life in physical form it was so exciting when you get that notification in your email from like neon city records on Bandcamp. nowadays in 2024 my collection currently sits at 237 vinyl records i got a couple dozen test pressings a solid chunk of cassettes and cds that at this point i just keep in my closet um because i just have no more room to store them in the shelves and i i really didn't want a ton of stuff to just sit out just to be out even though there is a ton of stuff here but yeah i something i do love collecting is autographed pieces my personal favorite signed albums that i do have in my collection is my autographed and empty bliss beyond this world by the caretaker i was able to spend some time with james leland kirby when he came to the states and performed at the lincoln center a couple of months ago afterwards we met up with james at a nearby bar in the city 
shared a drink, talked some bullshit, you know, and um, I brought the record with me. I told him how much I appreciate his work, and I asked if he could sign it, and he was more than happy to. Hey, look at this stupid fucking picture of us. Like, <laughs> like the dude, James Leland Kirby is an absolute dog. He is so funny in real life. Like, you, you couldn't, you wouldn't really know. He, I don't know. At least from what I know about James on the internet, like he's kind of, like he's kind of private, and like you know him as this like mysterious caretaker figure. But like, he is a funny ass dude in real life. Let me tell you. And uh, <laughs> he's a great dude. And I appreciate him very much. And this record is very important to me. And it's a uh, super special piece in my collection. I want to showcase some more of my Cat System Corp records as well. One of the true OG Vaporwave Titans whose discography is among some of the very best in the genre. I know we talked about the Hereith pressing before, which nowadays has gotten pretty crazy in price for this one specifically, I think. It might have gotten down, though, a little bit because Cat Corp repressed the album a couple of times afterwards. There was another Hereath pressing that looked really cool. It was like a half transparent, half like paint thing. Like, I don't know, but something I do want to point out here is my News as 11 splatter pressing that I have. This is one of my favorite Vaporwave albums of all time and was pressed by the amazing Geometric Lullaby label. If you know my channel, you know how much I love Geometric Lullaby. You can make a damn drinking game from how many times I talk about them on here. And News at 11 is such a special album that looks and sounds incredible on vinyl. Speaking of projects that mean so much to me, let's move on to another personal favorite of mine, Death's Dynamic Shroud, DDS. Here we have the Olympics pressing. Only 200 of these were made by 100% Electronica, the World War Olympics album, and the album was dropped, the pressing was dropped during their weekly big stream. And I was lucky enough to have the stream on in the background one day when they announced it, and I immediately dropped everything I was doing to pick this up. This is one of my favorite DDS albums of all time. Shout out to Tech Honors. I think he was the sole member of the group to work on this one. I could be wrong. Don't kill me, Shroudies. I could be wrong about that one. I gotta go look at the Venn diagram thing. And also one of my favorite Vaporwave albums of all time, another DDS record, I'll Try Living Like This. I have two pressings of this album, like I mentioned earlier, my OG Quiet Earth Records one, which was pressed at a thousand copies. And at the time, back in the early Vapor vinyl days, 1,000 copies was like unheard of. And these were available for quite a while, which was really cool. It was, it was kind of cool, like just seeing them gradually sell out. But eventually, 100% Electronica, as many people know, started pressing almost all of the DDS vinyl releases going forward. And they dropped one of the best Vaporwave vinyl releases, in my opinion, of all time, the I'll Try Living Like This Masterpiece Edition, a beautiful way to celebrate one of the most influential, unique, and powerful projects I've ever listened to, featuring more of that beautiful gatefold art and a whole bunch of extras in there, like an art book and full print inserts. So many of you already probably know this, but for those who don't, in 2021, I started my own record label, Cats Kill Records. We recently released our final album, iClick's incredible I Click With My Eye album, but over the years, I've been sure to at least keep one physical copy of everything we've pressed for myself and my collection. I've had the honor of working with some amazing artists who are now dear friends to me, and bringing their work to life has just been an amazing experience. Desert Sand Feels Warm at Night, Fake Fever, and Studio Studio, just to name a few. And creating the packaging and designing the OB strips for these vinyl and cassettes was such a therapeutic experience for me. I always wanted to make sure I did them myself. Uh, some of the artists that I did work with did want to do their own art, which of course I would let them do. Uh, but anytime I could just design these OB strips or you know lay the packaging out for the artist, I always jumped at that opportunity. Another label I'd love to showcase in this video is Montem Records, ran by producer and good friend of mine, Fiber. Here we have Discoholics Anonymous with some of the most beautiful colors on a splatter pressing you could ever see. Look at this thing. Also got this super neat chrome limited edition cassette from Disco as well. Some great disco feel good pop tunes. This dude is like the internet Bruno Mars but with a giant disco ball on his head. Great stuff for anyone looking to jam out and just feel good. They also press the incredible Waterbed Project by Tendencies, a future fun classic featuring some incredible Keith Rankin artwork that I always love to display on vinyl artwork in my you know collection. Beautiful future funk jams full of body and color always done exceptionally well 
by the Montem team. From Fiber specifically, the album Rendezvous you're seeing right now might be the prettiest album in my collection. And I knew I would eventually have to showcase this thing in some way or another on the channel. Look at this pressing. One of the weirdest records I have in my collection is Everywhere at the End of Bikini Bottom. An incredible take on the caretakers everywhere at the end of time, but obviously given a SpongeBob twist to it all. Created by Flash Club under the fitting moniker, The Sponge Taker, this limited edition double LP was dropped as a crowdfund on crates or curates, however you want to pronounce it, a site that artists can use to fund their vinyl releases with a crowdfund campaign. And I knew I had to have this thing once it was announced. I love anything caretaker related and I love SpongeBob. Who doesn't love SpongeBob? So getting this for the collection was a must and will always be one of my favorite oddities in here. I have wanted to do a video on this channel. I did reach out to the artist about that like a year ago and hopefully I can get to that this year because it would be a really fun to discuss this thing. Another weird album I have is my Flower Store LP, a bootleg reincarnation of sorts of the Vaporwave Holy Grail Macintosh Plus's Floral Shop. Released as what seems to be a collab from Villain and Kingdown Market. Also shout out to uh, Villain one of the best vaporwave just i don't know online i can't even call them vaporwave just like online internet electronic music labels that drops vinyl some of the most gorgeous pressings you'll ever see definitely check them out if you're interested and uh yeah this thing is so weird this flower store lp i love it it's like i found it a dumpster behind ac moore some like arts and crafts store or something uh they also did a version of chuck person's echo jam uh, like this, <laughs> like look at this thing. I love wacky stuff. Like they send a Pokemon card in there too. Next up, I'd like to showcase some pressings from my favorite band of all time, The Fall of Troy. Middle school and high school pad was in love with this band. And over the years, I've been able to obtain some of my favorite albums of all time on physical form thanks to labels like Enjoy the Ride Records, their manipulator tri-color split double LP, whatever you want to call it. Pressing may be my favorite packaging out of all of the records in my collection. The vinyl colors are gorgeous and the inner gatefold jacket features some gnarly colorful artwork as well. And talking about cool packaging, I got to include my King Ghidorah Take Me To Your Leader limited edition red vinyl pressing with the pop out 3D art inserts. I can't get myself to actually pop these out. And I'm being a little, a little bit of a hypocrite here because I said, you know, I play all the stuff that I have and whatnot. So I should just like set this up one day. I think I will. But yeah, it's stuff like this that makes selecting so fun and worthwhile when there's just something else else included in the packaging. Yeah, it's awesome. In regards to my setup for playing vinyl, here I got my Onkyo sound system. I bought this once at a yard sale, brand new for like 15 bucks. Everything, the receiver, speakers, the sub, and I've been using this thing for a couple of years now. And also many of y'all may remember, for the longest time I was using a Fluence RT80 turntable, but a big shout out to Retrolife for sending me their UD006 turntable and speaker system. I do eventually want to move on to another new turntable, but this setup from Retrolife has honestly made a really nice home for playing records for the time being. I really love the minimal look, and it comes with a Bluetooth input output as well, which I have to use sometime soon. The turntables come with two 40 watt speakers as well, which is a nice addition. And for the price, it's a pretty solid move, especially for anyone who is maybe looking to take the next step into vinyl collecting and Let's say they have a Crossley or something. This is like that perfect second step system, all in one everything. Um, it's sleek, simple, super easy to set up. And I'll leave a link to this model for anyone who's interested in the description of this video down below. Go show some love to Retro Life and thank you all for uh, sending me one of these. Something I've talked about before on the channel, and it isn't a vinyl record, uh, but it is something that I think is so unique in my collection. And it's one of my favorite pieces is my floral shop on Reel to Reel. Shout out to my good buddy Emmanuel for making this himself and giving me one of the two copies he created. I did a whole video on this thing years ago if you wanna check it out. I'll leave a link in the description of this video and you should also see a pop up at the top right corner of this video as well if you wanna check it out. Kinda goes over the whole process of how this thing was made and we take a whole look at it. It's just really, really cool stuff. Something I'll always be thankful for in my collection is Corespect Records, shout out to Alan, one of the best dudes in the game who took on pressing my album Contrast back in like 2019 or 2020, I don't even remember. Um, Alan let me have full creative control of the packaging on this thing and looking at it now gives me so much nostalgia. It's crazy that this was only a couple years ago, but it feels like 20 years ago when I made this thing. What a different time. 
Let's move on over to some of the stuff I have here on the shelf. As mentioned earlier, I used to love collecting retro video games, and I decided to keep a very small handful of my personal favorites after deciding to part ways with my collection a couple of years ago. Pokemon Blue version is my favorite video game of all time, and after I graduated college in 2015, I decided to buy myself a poor post-college graduate student such a dumb move at the time at the time like i was like i even knew this was so dumb to be spending this much money on a game but i bought myself a factory sealed copy of the game on ebay i think for like 300 bucks 320 bucks at the time and uh years later i cannot believe where the retro video game market has gone prices are out of control these days now it just stays nice and cozy next to some of the other Pokemon items I have there, like my Complete in Box Japanese Blue version and my Pokemon Blue on the N64, a cool gift my buddy got me one time. I love my box Game Boy stuff as well, and also decided to get a plexiglass case for my original Game Boy Color I had as a kid. Let me tell you, this thing has been through it all. It doesn't even have the back battery cover on there anymore, and my entire childhood could be summed up by this thing alone. Got my Complete in Box, Pokemon Pinball next to my Thanos Infinity Gauntlet Lego thing, giving off some friendly vibes, you know the deal. Mario Party 2, the best Mario Party ever made, I will die on that hill. And my Tears of the Kingdom stuff, I gotta show that off as well. As for the amount of my entire collection, I tried my best logging everything into Discogs, which is a site that you can buy and sell records on. Um, you could tell really, you know, weird, wacky stuff. There's like 80 different versions of Led Zeppelin albums on there. It pretty much has everything you need. It's a great database for seeing um, what you own and like maybe some more information behind it. And what's really cool is you can just plug in all the album specific pressings you have in your collection and um, it'll create your collection on like your profile or whatever. And it will give you a couple different estimations on what your collection might be worth. There are three categories the site does this in. So there's lowest, which combines the lowest prices the records in your collection have ever sold for. The median, I think I'm assuming that stands for median, which is the average price of all records combined in your collection. And highest, which is obviously the highest amount each of your records have ever sold for being combined into one ultimate sum. Now, before we keep going, the amount my collection is worth is 100% higher than this. And I'm saying that because I don't have any of my test pressings included in this at all, which those alone, who the hell knows what they're worth with how incredibly limited those are. Almost all of them have never been sold before on Discog. So there's no way to track the price of what they may be worth. But as of right now, here are my numbers all in all. Regarding my clear-cut retail vinyl collection, my 271 records, it's worth about 10 grand, which is pretty awesome. Test pressing-wise, though, like I said, I have a whole bunch here that I have gotten over the years from artists and labels that you just don't seem to find in the wild very often. I would say my personal favorite grail from my test pressings collection is my groceries, yes, we're open test pressing that I got from Geometric Lullaby. Also, maybe my Kmart lath cuts from Power PCME. These are super insane to own. I never really play these, but it's just really cool to see, you know, what the artist or the label was receiving at the time before they officially approved the pressing to go to full production. And um, I really love collecting these test pressings. It feels like you're part of this weird, like, you know, middle ground of the production process that not many people got to see and you get to hold it for yourself. So I do uh, cherish a lot of these test pressings. It's pretty wild looking back over the years to see how the collection has grown or shrunk and changed in style. Going through my channel, you can really see this take place from different rooms and different houses I lived in to shelving units and everything else in between it. It's wild looking back at all this. Vinyl collecting, no matter how compact I end up making the collection over the years, will always be something I hold so dear to my heart. The beauty of records is that it gives you the opportunity to discover new music by just going to a yard sale or a record store, let's say, and just picking up something that looks pretty and taking a chance with it. And sure, you can obviously do that online digitally, of course. I talk about that all the time and how much I love getting lost in random, lesser known band camp releases and just surfing the web and just getting lost and finding weird things. Going into a record store and flipping through records, taking a chance with something and discovering the entirety of someone's creative direction through what they made for you to purchase, 
is an experience I always find so fulfilling and human. You get to help support the artists. Uh, you just get to take home something physical in your hands and it's an amazing experience. So as I mentioned earlier, let me know your personal favorite items in your collection down in the comments below. I'll see you down there. Keep on sharing great music and great vibes always. Happy 2024. And uh, I love you all. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. And uh, let's have a good year, everybody. Much love, your boy, Pad Chennington.